Welcome friends. We are your hosts, Sandy and Wade, baby best friends turned husband and wife and business partners. This podcast is for the dreamers, the movers and shakers, and those who seek to attract their dream life. Strap in, getting magnetic in three, two, one. Like attracts like. If you see it in your mind, you can hold it in your hand. You just decide what it's going to be, who you're going to be, how you're going to do it. And then from that point, the universe is going to get out your way. This moment in time, this is your time to rise. I hope you guys love a good love story. Sandy and I were actually watching The Notebook the other night. It was Saturday night, probably the best date night we've had in a while. And it inspired us. We were like, oh man, hit record. This has got to be the first episode of our podcast. And we really want, before we get into the kind of the meat of the podcast, we wanted to go through our story and have you get to know us. And almost by the end of this episode, we want you to feel like Sandy and Wade are my friends. I think that's really the goal of this, right? And so with that said, without further ado, get ready for our love story presented by Sandy and Wade. Okay, here we go. So this starts actually back in like 1970s. This is crazy, guys. Okay, so my dad and Wade's mom went to high school together in Wayland, Massachusetts. That's really far from where we live now. It's about 3,000 miles away. So they went to school in Wayland, Massachusetts, and it wasn't until about 10 years after they graduated that they both found themselves living in the same city in California. And my aunt, actually my dad's sister, found out that Jennifer, Wade's mom, was having her first baby and said, oh my gosh, I would love your address. I would love to send a baby gift. What's your address? So Jennifer gives my aunt Linda the address and finds out that it's only a couple miles from where her little brother, my dad, lives. I hope you guys are making all these connections. So Aunt Linda sends the gift and makes the connection and tells Jen, like, Jen, you got to connect with my little brother, Jimmy. Remember him? He lives in Laguna Niguel and his wife, Yulia, is pregnant with her first as well. And so long story longer, my parents were pregnant with me. This is in 1989. And Wade's parents were pregnant with him, which was their first. And so our moms met and they became instant friends. So we remembered a little differently. Obviously, we were still kind of in the womb, but our, our, you know, we've heard the story from our parents and they instantly became best friends and they would go to the beach together. They would, you know, they were pregnant. They were moms. They were having fun. They were living in Southern California. And, you know, Sandy being the wiser soul that she is actually came out, popped out three weeks before me, April 17th, 1989, uh, leading the way, leading the charge as always. And I came three weeks later on May 8th and we were just instant built in baby best friends. Like our moms would hang out. They would, you know, hang out with us together. And, you know, eventually we got to a point where they would bring us to the beach And I remember my mom showing me pictures of Sandy and I running naked on the beach on Strands Beach right down the road in Dana Point and dragging seaweed. And it's just so fun to reflect on just thinking about like, wow, we built in kind of baby best friend. So cool. And we even have a picture of us when we were like one years old kissing. Weed was wearing a Santa hat. He jokes. That's why I love Christmas so much. Yeah. (laughs) Sandy's nickname is Sandy Claus. I'm going to take some credit for that. But yeah, our first kiss, one year old in our onesies, Santa hat. Oh, man. Epic. People don't believe it. They're like, is that you? That's actually you. Like, yeah, yeah, that's us. Okay, so Wade and his family lived here in Orange County till we were about two. And then due to Wade's dad's job, they relocated back to the East Coast. So they moved there and our families always remain friends. I will always remember we always got the Criddies family Christmas card. One year, actually, when I was like probably in ninth grade, I was stashed it in my desk. And my mom asked me, why is the Criddies family Christmas card in your desk? And I was like, I don't know. But really, I just love staring at it. I remember I thought I was so cool. I vividly remember that. I think it was my like yeah, graduation or, or something. And I was with my friends and we were smoking cigars and like blowing the smoke out, like thought I was so cool and come to find out like years and years later, we'll get there. But Sandy had that graduation card that we mailed to them because we were family friends in her desk, like that (laughs) that your mom found. It's so funny. So growing up, like after, you know, those initial years, like we didn't see each other a whole lot. Like, I feel like I had a really great relationship with your mom and our moms were great friends. And we'd go to the East Coast and visit the Criddies and the Criddies would come to the West Coast and visit the Elliots. But it really wasn't until about seven years ago when we were, what, 23 ish? Before we even get there. Oh, I vividly remember two instances. First, one time we came out to California 
and we were all hanging out. I think we were watching movies or we were barbecuing or whatever. And the kids, like we were young enough. We might have been in ninth grade. You know, you start to get, you know, interested in, in girls or boys or whatever. And we were playing hide and go seek. And I, I remember, remember this. Yeah, you remember that? <laughs> I remember playing hide and seek and like kind of secretly hoping that, I don't know, maybe you'd like find me in a closet and we could like have a kiss on the cheek. <laughs> it's funny because I remember that night vividly too. And I remember thinking like, gosh, like Sandy is so cute. Like, but that's my family friend. I mean, is, is that cool? Is that chill? And then, <laughs> and then I remember fast forward a couple years to prom. That was it. Junior prom in high school. And I didn't have a prom date. And my mom was like, why don't you invite Sandy? And I was like, mom, what? no, stop embarrassing me. Like, that's our family friend. What are you talking about? But secretly inside, I was like, oh, man, that'd be so cool. Like, you know, my blonde friend from California, like California girl bringing her to prom. But I didn't I didn't have enough courage at the time to ask her to prom. Mama knows best. Mama knows best. OK, rewinding to the years prior, the story you were just telling about the hide and go seek. Mm -hmm. We have pictures of that night. You were wearing baggy pants and I was, <laughs> I had like huge, huge, like hoop earrings on. The style was whack. I know it was whack, but it's just funny. And it's, it's so interesting too. Cause Sam, my little brother, he's nine years younger. He thought we were cousins. <laughs> he thought the Elliot's and the Crudies were cousins forever. It's just so funny. On the record, we are not cousins. We are not related at all. Just so everyone knows. Okay. So let's get to like, that's all the backstory. Great. Let's get to like us as we call discovering each other, mm -hmm. which was about seven years ago when we were 23. You tell this part amazing. So I often say this, but I believe that sometimes your mess can become your message and sometimes pain can drive you or pain can bring an incredible opportunity your way. And so about seven years ago, actually in February of 2013, my mom unexpectedly passed away. And that was pretty life-changing for me. It's something actually to this day that is that I still like process and deal with. It's crazy because as much as I miss her, I'm so grateful for where we stand today. And Wade and I, I fully believe would not be together if my mom was still here. So seven years ago, my mom passed away and it kind of like changed my world. Like I was like, wow, like I get one life. If I only live to be 49, like my mom did, like I want to live a life every day to the fullest. I want to make her proud. I want to leave a legacy behind. And so I was working in hospitality at the time. I literally quit my job. I had no plan. I had no idea what I was doing. I actually had been dating someone at that point for several years. Great guy, but I don't know. I just felt like he wasn't there for me in the way that I hoped he would be when I was going through something so traumatic. So what I decided to do, like I am such a gut person. Like I follow my heart. I follow my gut. I trust my intuition. I quit my job. I called Jen, Wade's mom, and my two aunts live on the East Coast. And I said, I need maternal energy. I need to be around women in my life that I respect. I'm coming to visit you. So I quit my job. I booked a flight to the East Coast and I went to go visit Jen. And I was actually only supposed to be there for a couple nights. And this is crazy, but... The day I was supposed to leave, the exact train I was supposed to take that was going to pick me up in Boston and take me to Philly to visit my aunt crashed on its way to get me. And it's crazy. No one died, but I do remember that like it changed the whole plan. And I had to stay there, or I should say got to stay there mm -hmm. an extra three nights. And Jen had to work. And so she's like, well... Wade can entertain you. And that was when you took me, we went to that concert, we went to Harvard, we ran the stairs, like that is the weekend that we truly discovered each other. Totally. Oh my gosh, I remember it like it was yesterday. I just remember, you know, in, in a definitely a sad time, like you want to be there for your family friend and you want to be there for someone and you can see someone's hurting. And it was an opportunity, you know, by chance, by fate, she had to stay. She she got to stay a few extra days. And I had the opportunity to take time off work and stay with her. And I was like, you know what? I want to fill, you know, her next few days with positivity. I want to show her my world. I want to show her Boston. I want to show her, let's go run Harvard stairs. Let's go run Harvard Stadium. Let's drive in my car and blast country music. She actually had made me a country CD because I wasn't much of a like a country boy back then. I tended to, you know, hip hop was kind of my thing. And she gave me a country CD. Now I love country. And we were blasting it with the windows down and driving on the highway and singing it and like really just feeling good, like living in the moment and just kind of forgetting about, you know, the hurt and the pain around, you know, us and around her. And it was just so special. I vividly remember we went to Harvard Stadium. It's like the Coliseum in Gladiator. It's like amazing. It, it looks like the Roman Cathedral Empire stadiums. And it's actually pretty tough to run. It's a great workout. It's actually something they do in, in Boston, in the Boston area. And so I took her to run it. And she 
was a champ and was like, yeah, pff, I'll finish that. And so we did and we did it together. And it was, it was hurt. We were kind of hurting after. And so then we were on the field and we were kind of stretching. Then we got to a point where we were kind of like stretching each other. And I vividly remember that moment because I was like, oh my gosh, like I have all the feels for this like woman right here. Like she is magnetic. You know, those people that come into your life and they're just this shot of life and, and they're magnetic. And you're like, I can't deny this feeling like I can't deny this energy. And that was a specific moment for me where I was like, whoa. So we spent three days together. I kind of showed her my world a bit and had so much fun together amidst, you know, hard times. And we were able to escape from that a little bit. And it was just, oh my gosh, it was so special. That was us discovering each other. Yeah. And remember your mom was like, she'd come home from work. Like one night we went to Whole Foods and we bought like salmon and we bought all these salad supplies and we all made an incredible dinner together. We listened to country, played Scrabble that night. Yes. We're both super competitive. And we played Scrabble and it was towards the end and it was like the winning point. <laughs> and I played the word, was it doy? D-U-H? D-O-Y. Oh, sorry. Oh yeah. Not duh. It was D-O-Y. And I said it was a playoff of duh. And you were like, no, it's not. I challenge that. And I'm like, I don't think you want to challenge it. <laughs> and it was like, it was like this joke forever. Whenever you, when you would say, duh, we're like, doy. But anyway, I ugh, lost the game. We just had so many incredible like memories from that weekend. And like Wade said, like, I just like, so my mom passed in February and this trip was actually in May. So it was the first time in months that I had felt like joy. Like it was the first time in months where I felt like, oh my gosh, like I'm gonna be okay. Like it was the first time I escaped from my reality and the deep pain. And I grew very curious about him. I'm like, you know what? I came out here wanting to have maternal advice. Come see my aunts, come see Jen. Talk to them about how I'm like this close to breaking up with this guy because I don't like how he's handling this. And it gave me like validation. Like I was like, the fact that I'm even curious about someone else, the fact that I have these feelings like bubbling up inside of me, that there is that chemistry that I wanna know more about about him that like, I just think he's funny and he's magnetic and he has this contagious, like positively good vibe. Like I want to know more about him. And so that's kind of like how the weekend kicked off. And I will say too, amidst all this, like this is all like when we're hanging out, very respectful, very like friend like where, you know, nothing crazy is happening, but you can feel it. You know, when you can feel that and you feel that energy and you're like, I feel this way. And you're wondering, are they feeling this way? I was wondering the whole time, like, does Sandy feel an ounce of the, what I feel. Cause if so, like we're in the game here. <laughs> and it's so funny. Cause I felt the same way. I'm like, Oh my gosh, not only is he like a dime piece, <laughs> it's not even a thing. Yeah. I think that was like five years ago, but Hey, we'll roll. With okay. It. I was like, not only is he just like, I'm very attracted to him, but I love his vibe. I love his energy. Like, but I had no idea if you felt the same way. And so when I left that weekend, finally, like actually the only way I could leave, I couldn't book a train. The flights were fairly booked. I had to take a bus to Philly and it was a nine hour bus ride. And I will never forget that day. Jennifer took me to the bus station and it was raining. And I vividly remember I was sitting in a window spot and I had my forehead on the window and the window was cold and Jen's standing there and she's waving to me. And I'm like sitting there thinking like, when am I going to see her again? Like, when am I like, what am I doing with my life? I just quit my job. I got validation that I'm definitely breaking up with this guy. I'm growing curious about Wade. I'm like really sad that I'm leaving right now. I was smiling, waving at her, but I like even telling this to you right now, I felt like hot tears rolling down my face and just feeling so empty and like, what is my next step? What is my next path? And so Sandy, you know, left on the bus and immediately like it felt like there was this hole or this void like that I didn't even know was there. But like spending three days with her, she just filled my life with such positivity and amazingness and just energy. And it was she left and there was this hole of void. And I was like, I got to tell her how I feel. How do I do that, though? I got to respect the boundaries of her relationship and of our friendship and our family friendship. And I was like, you know what, I'm going to feel the fear and do it anyway. I'm just going to do it. So I wrote her what I call to this day, a millennial love letter, aka a text when she got on the bus and I, I mustered up the courage and I wrote basically just telling her how amazing of a human I thought she was and how just beautiful she was inside and out and how I'm here for her, you know, as she goes through this trying times and I want to be there for her and kind of an endearing millennial love letter. And then I thought, you know what, I'm going to go for it. I'm going to shoot my shot. You miss every shot you don't take. So at the very end of this text, I said, P.S., we should make a pact to get married one day. And I was like, 
going back and forth. I'm like, do I hit send? Do I hit send? I hit send. I closed my phone. I threw it away. And I was just like, oh man, I just did that. By the way, this is when text messages were still green. Yeah. Like they didn't do the blue. No, it wasn't a flip phone. It was a brand new iPhone, but they did the green messages. It was before like iMessages. You might have been advanced. I might have still had a flip phone. (laughs) Whatever. (laughs) But I just could still like, I wish I had a screenshot of it because I can still envision it in my head. I still remember I was literally on this nine hour bus ride. The bus had just stopped. We were like in the middle of who knows what state. And we were at this like truck stop center. I was like sitting at a subway eating like a bag of Doritos, like just feeling so just sad for where I was in my life. And I got this text message and I was like, there's hope. Like, I was like, oh my gosh. And the second I read that, I was like, I'm going to marry him. Oh, decided heart. It is going down. Sandy Critties. That's my future name. Like, it was like, I knew it. And before we go on, I felt the same way. Like, I felt like I knew it too. Like, at that Harvard Stadium, I, I felt like I was like, this is my future wife. Like, I know it. You know, when you just know something, your intuition, your gut, your heart. Sandy and I very much so go off of intuition. Like, we think when something's placed on your heart, it's put there for a reason. And like, we both felt individually and we didn't know the other felt that way. But like this instance, this experience, this person was placed in my life on my heart for a reason. Like they're here to stay. Totally. And so I truly, it sounds crazy, but I truly believe that if my mom was still here, you and I wouldn't be together. And so as much as it hurts me and as much as I miss her, like I am grateful for our path. I'm grateful for all the things that I've been through. And like, I know she's in a better place. I know she's not, you know, in pain anymore. And I, I know that you and I were designed for each other. And I know that she's like celebrating, like, that's what I wanted. Heck yes, she is. (laughs) Long story longer come home from this trip and my mind is racing. I'm like, I know who my husband is. All this is happening for a reason. Sometimes in the middle of a mess, things don't make sense. And I was starting to realize it was kind of like hindsight 2020 looking back at the past few months and being like, all this is unfolding because he's my person. Like I had to go through a tremendous loss to be able to be, I guess you could say introduced, even though we already knew each other, it's kind of like this rediscovery. I had to go through that to to have this come into my life. And so to me, it was like game over. He's my man. Well, it's so funny because we've told our love story to people and we've literally seen grown men cry. Like we've literally, true, (laughs) literally like grown men, like people be like, I have full chills. I love your story. Like just so good. Right. And it's true. It really is like we have an incredible story. And so it seems I could be all happily ever after. Right. (laughs) No, that is not what happened. Um, (laughs) Great things don't come easy. Right. (laughs) So There was a couple years there where it was really hard. So Wade and I were long distance. I'm in California. He's in Massachusetts doing the long distance thing. We'd see each other every few months. I'll remember when we used to do the countdowns for like 57 sleeps till we get to see each other. That might've been more of a you thing, but yeah, I went along with it. (laughs) (laughs) You went along with it. But yeah, so that was all part of it. And I remember like it got to a point even like, not going to go deep into this part, but like there was even a chapter where I felt like, you know, you put it out there, like, let's get married. And then I was like, okay, let's make this happen. And it didn't happen right away. And then I was like, okay, I don't know what his deal is. Like I'm a relationship type person and I'm not going to like stick around for whatever he's doing right now. You kind of like just graduated grad school and you were like moved downtown and you were like living your best life. And I'm like, okay, I am not here for this. So (laughs) I actually dated someone else for a year and a half. I love it. I love it. We have obviously have different perspectives on it. Yeah. Sandy's like a feeler, like, and she was just ready, just ready to get married right away. We're young. We're like 22 when this is all going down. And for me, I knew that I wanted to marry Sandy and I knew that we would be together. But I, you, I think, you know, with anyone, you got to know yourself first. Right. And I knew and understood myself and I was like, okay, let's, let's check like Mike check here. I just graduated grad school. I just moved in the city. I'm starting my career in Boston. She just, you know, she just started her career out in California. We aren't quite ready to merge lives yet. I'm like, I got to spread my wings a little bit. I got to like live free and like go out on the weekends and party with my friends and, you know, work hard in the day job and then, you know, party on the weekend and do it all over again. I was immature at the time. Sandy is a much more mature person than me. I'm I'm trying to catch up to her, but she was kind of ready to rock. And I was like, oh my gosh, I'm not, I'm not there yet because I, I knew myself and I understood I'm not who I need to be yet. I'm not Sandy's husband yet. I'm not who I need to be. I've got growing and learning to do. I've got life experience to do, but I know I can and will become that man. But I needed a couple of years there of like of growth, of personal development, of, of getting the, I'm living in the city and going out drinking with my friends out of my system, basically. 
Yeah. So that went down, dated someone else for a while and Wade never stopped like pursuing me, I guess you could say. I remember one Christmas, this must have been like maybe 2014, 2015. I think it was 2014, the Christmas. You sent me a beautiful bouquet of flowers and it said, Merry Christmas, Sandy Claus. And I was with my boyfriend and Tanya <laughs> snapped a picture. My sister, Tanya, snapped a picture of it. It got sent to my dad's house and she texts it to me and goes, from your secret admirer. And I turned to my boyfriend and I go, why did you send these to my dad's house? And he's like, I didn't. And my heart sank. I was like, oh, Wade and I have not talked in a couple months and he's sending me flowers. And I was like, oh my gosh, I know what I need to do. Like, I just need to be patient and just, okay, I need to just, I know what I got to do. And so it took a few months to like fully rip off the bandaid. But a few months later, I ended things with that guy and Wade and I started talking again. And I kind of like laid the law down a little bit. I was like, listen up, bucko. <laughs> listen up, bucko. Like I adore you. And you say, you know, we're going to get married. And I know that too. And I know we haven't even like fully dated and we don't have like the boyfriend girlfriend title, but like, let's, let's make this happen. Like, let's do this. And so I owned a brick and mortar at the time, like a smoothie juice bar franchise. I'd owned it for a few years and it required a lot of my like time and energy. And Wade had a great finance job in Boston. And I was like, listen, I am going to sell my business. I am going to move across the country we are going to start our life together. I'm like such a doer. I'm like, let's make this happen. And I feel like you weren't like super about it at first. Yeah, Sandy is an action taker. No, I was super about it. But it, our different perspective, Sandy's like someone who makes something happen. Like she said, once there's a decided heart, it's happening. Like get out of our way, basically. And for me, I knew we were going to get married. Like in my heart, I always knew it. And I knew you knew it too. So I had like comfort and security there. But there was nothing like pushing me to like make it happen ASAP. But Sandy basically is like, all right, I know this is going to happen too. And like, this is how it's going to roll. And she basically goes, I'm selling my brick and mortar juice shop. I'm moving to Boston with you. I'm kind of going to come experience your world. I get to meet your friends, do your thing. You get to, you know, continue your career for another year. You show me the work, your world there. And then we're moving back to California. And she puts it out there just boldly. And I actually wasn't resistant to it. I was like, dang, like, no, that's a dope idea. Yeah, no, let's do it. Like, let's do it. And it's funny all along this whole time. I'm telling my friends from college, from high school, like, no, I'm going to marry this girl, Sandy. And they're like, yeah, yeah, no, of course you are. And I was like, no, no, really? And then I would tell them like, she's actually going to move out here. And they like, didn't believe me. And I'm like, and then we're going to move to California together. They're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. When you move to California, we'll see. We'll see about that. And they like, didn't believe me, but I knew I was always like confident and secure in it. And so Sandy picks up her life, hops on a plane. I think she thought she was going to be out there for like three to six months. We ended up signing a year lease. I got her to stay out there a little longer. And this is a born and raised uh, Southern California. Orange County girl coming to Boston comes in the fall. Beautiful. Great. Great. I highly advise going to Boston in the fall. And then it turns winter time. And she's like, Oh my gosh, what did I sign up for? Do you want to take it from there? Wow. Yes. Yeah. So I moved there September of 2016. That winter was rough. I definitely had sad. What is it? Seasonal something depression, <laughs> like no joke, like straight up was very affected. I get so affected by like clouds and rain and dark skies and all that stuff. And I'm so grateful for the chapter. I met some incredible people. I learned a lot about myself. I think it's so like for anyone listening, that's like contemplating moving or like going to a new place, like do it. You will learn so much about yourself. You will meet incredible people. It will just really come full circle for you. I know it. So yeah, live there together for a year. And I realized you know, it's time to step up my game. We're, we're moving back to California. I got to step up my game. Sandy, this is my future wife. And so I started to think like, okay, how am I going to propose? Like I knew we were going to be together. How am I going to propose? And I was thinking about it. I was thinking about it. And we realized some of our close friends were getting married in Dubrovnik, Croatia, right around when our lease was up. So we were like, oh my gosh, how perfect would it be? We'll, our lease will be up in Boston. We will go on a Europe trip. And then we'll move to California together. Like what a perfect end to the chapter and the start of a new chapter. And so we booked the Dubrovnik, Croatia flights and we're going out to the wedding. And we also, we, we were going to be in Croatia for a week. The week prior, we booked to be in Switzerland. Sandy is a dual citizen, Swiss and US citizen. Her mom was Swiss. And so she carries, you know, strong pride there. She, you would go a lot as a kid, right? Like you'd often visit. Yeah, my mom was born and raised in Switzerland. And I went many summers growing up and speaking Swiss German fairly fluently. And the Swiss roots are like a big part of my life. So it's actually funny. Before we went on the trip, I called Tanya, my sister, like three weeks before. I'm like, Tan, I had a dream 
that Wade proposed to me at the Matterhorn. And this would be so significant because the Matterhorn is this beautiful, like monumental, it's like the Alps. And several years before my mom had passed away, my family and I all flew to Switzerland and we spread my mom's ashes and we planted a tree in her honor with a view of the Matterhorn. And so I had this dream that Wade proposed to me there and I called Tan and I tell her and she's like, Sian, don't put so much pressure on him. Like just go and enjoy it. He's never been there. That's not going to happen. Like that is a straight up dream out of fantasy land and it's not going to happen. I'm like, okay, I'll let it go. We'll just go and I'll just like enjoy it. Meanwhile, I had the ring picked out. My aunt, shout out Aunt Sally, is actually an engagement ring designer and she made it custom for me based on what I think Sandy would like. She kind of, you know, Sandy would drop hints and be like, I like this, I like that. I definitely dropped hints. <laughs> like major hints. But she designed it. It was perfect. Guys, any guys out there who have proposed, how nerve wracking is it to like have a ring on hand for three months like before you propose and you're like trying to hide it in your apartment and you're like thousand square foot apartment. So anyways, we board the flight to go to Switzerland. I'm like, oh my gosh, this is like our whole lives are about to change. That had was the first time I had been to Europe. So we just going through Switzerland. It was amazing. She was showing me all her favorite spots. And I figured what better place to get engaged to ask, you know, Sandy to marry me than in the place where they planted a tree in her mom's honor. They spread her ashes like up on the mountain with views of the Matterhorn, like what better place. So that that was the plan. And she has aunts and uncles out there. And they, we stayed with them and we had planned to, you know, go up and check out the Matterhorn. So we wake up morning of, and I'm super nervous. Like the whole time I played it pretty cool. Anytime she was near my bag, I was like, all right, I got to play it cool. I can't lead on that. There's maybe a ring in there. Like, so playing super cool, traveling with a ring to Europe is, is kind of nerve wracking. But anyways, we get there and we're hiking up and we're taking a gondola up the mountain. And I'm like rehearsing in my head. Like I had planned you know, an engagement, a proposal, like I, I had kind of written something out. And so we get to her place, we get up there and we're going to look for her mom's tree that, that they plant in her honor. And we're, we have a picture of a still picture of it. So we're walking around and it's been, you know, some time there. I feel like you could explain that a little better. Well, we actually had like the latitude longitude. Remember, oh, yes. we had the exact yes. pin dropped from when I was there years prior. Mm -hmm. So somehow found that and that's how we identified the tree. But the tree had grown quite a bit since the last time I was there. Yes. And so we found it. And we're like, all right, what a perfect spot to take a picture. I had planned the night before Real quick, when Sandy went to the bathroom and we were out to dinner with her aunt and uncle, I was like, okay, I'm going to propose. This is when it's going to happen. This, I, I was like quarterback. And I was like, all right, can you get a white rose? Can you get this? Can you do that? You go to take the picture. I'm going to drop down on the All right, Sandy's coming back in 30 seconds. Ready? Go. And so that was the night before dinner. So they were prepared. They knew it was going down. And so we go to take, you know, a photo of us. We, you know, at the spot with the Matterhorn in the background. It's a beautiful bluebird day, blue skies, sun is out. It couldn't be more perfect. And we go to take the photo and that was my cue. And I drop on, down on one knee, ask Sandy to marry me. And what'd you say? Heck yes. <laughs> through, through a bunch of tears. But what's crazy about it all too, is literally my dream came to life. I dreamed about this happening and Tanya shot it down and was like, that's not happening sister. And it wasn't that I knew it was just like me envisioning and manifesting and believing for. And it's crazy because that morning before we went up the gondola, I'll never forget. I looked at my hand, my left hand that did not have a ring on it. And I told myself, this is the last time you will ever look at your left hand, your ring finger without a ring on it. And then Three seconds later, negative self-talk comes in and it's like, mm, fake news. <laughs> but little did I know it actually was happening. It was just like my mind was playing games with me. Some could say you got magnetic maybe. Yep. Oh, so she said, yes, it was amazing. I then had an opportunity. Her dad had written a beautiful letter to, you know, his wife in, in her honor and had read it out loud there. And it was on video. And I always had admired your dad and, and obviously still do this day and looked up to him and respected him. And so I was like, I want to write, you know, Sandy's mom, Yulia, a letter too, and kind of ask for her daughter's hand in marriage and say, like, I'm going to protect her. Like, I'm going to be there for her. I'm going to be her person. So I read her a letter just super special day. Maybe we'll, we'll find a way to share that somehow. Yeah, we um, have videos of it. It's so special. So anyway, that is like a nutshell of our story. Then we move back to California. We'll share more about these things like in, in maybe future podcasts, like trickle things in. But we came back and we got married uh, about a year later. We actually got married on New Year's Eve of 2018 because that would have marked my parents' 30th anniversary. And so there was a lot of significance with New Year's Eve. So that's kind of our love story. That's kind of like taking you through the past 31 years, yes. how it all started. And 
It's so crazy to me too, because it, it's really a story that comes full circle. Like I was born out here in Laguna Niguel in Orange County, California, and we spent a lot of time in Dana Point, right, right next door. And we used to run on the beach naked together in Dana Point and fast forward 31 years and we get married at the Ocean Institute in the Dana Point Harbor. And it's just like a story that comes full circle and it just is a big part of our story. And we wanted to share that with you guys so you guys could get to know us better. So with all that said, I love reliving our love story and I just want to empower you guys wherever you are in your life and in your love journey. Like I want you to know that your person is absolutely there for you. It's crazy because Wade was always right in front of me and I, I didn't know he was my person like that whole time, but you know, it worked out for us. And so I want you to know like your person is there for you. Visualize it, like believe for it and know that in the right time, it will come to you. You are exactly where you need to be. And that's a wrap. Thanks for tuning in to Getting Magnetic with Sandy and Wade. On the next episode, you can expect to hear our journey beyond marriage into where we're at today as entrepreneurs, as business owners, and how we got there and how we attracted that and kind of some tangible steps and principles and values that we implemented in our life to get there. So we look forward to hanging with you guys next time and we'll catch you on the flip side. We hope you enjoyed our first podcast. We invite you to share, subscribe, rate, and review. And let's connect on social media. Our podcast Instagram is Getting Magnetic. My Instagram is Sandy Claus 7 And Wade's is Wellness with Wade. And if you guys have questions or any topics you want us to cover, we want to hear from you. We want to welcome you to our magnetic community. Email us at gettingmagnetic at gmail.com. Only those that can see the invisible can do the impossible. So remember, you are magnetic.